YouTube, what up, those Jermaine and Credit Fiend? Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. Want to drop a video on, on uh, <laughs> people ask me what, um, how do I stop? How do you stop a debt collector from selling, you know, the debt or whatever to another debt collector? Or they'll get it deleted. You'll get it deleted from a off a credit report, and next, you know, a, a new debt collector is sending you something for the same debt, right? A uh, notice of a uh, um, notification of debt, validation of debt from the, about the same debt that you just re previously or recently got deleted. So I want to come on, you know, excuse the tire, I just got off work. So, but uh, I want to drop this because I'm going to be getting to be pretty busy here. So just remember that the information I, I, I cover on my channel is for education purpose only, okay, people? So this question was asked to me how I handle it. So I'm just sharing how I handle it, okay? Um, Not making any promises or guarantees. So let's let's just jump straight into it, okay? Um, First of all, I just use the Fair Debt Collect Practice Act. No secret, right? Um, Right here, I go to section 805. Communication and connection, communication and connection with debt. Okay, um, and I go right here to communication with third parties. Okay, so right here, without the prior consent of the consumer given directly to a debt collector or express permission of the court of a court of competent jurisdiction, jurisdiction, or as reasonably necessary to effectuate a post judgment judicial remedy. A debt collector may not communicate in connection with the collection of any debt with any person other than the consumer, that's you, his attorney, if you have one, the consumer reporting agency, it got deleted, if otherwise permitted by law, the creditor, okay, right, <laughs> you can communicate, they can, they can communicate with the creditor, the attorney of the creditor, or the attorney of the debt collector, right there, so, once it gets deleted, that's why I tell people it's not over when it, something gets deleted from if you dispute through the credit bureaus or consumer reporting agency. One, it, the item can be reinserted, right? Um, but two, uh, just because the consumer reporting agency says deleted, remember, when you get those investigation results, the consumer reporting agency, they don't give us a reason why they deleted it. Okay, they didn't say that the, we deleted the information because it was inaccurate or it was incomplete or it could not be verified. So to me, I look at it like, well, it's definitely not over. So now I need to take those results and send a direct dispute now under the Fair Credit Reporting Act here, a direct notice of dispute. Oh, a, oh, excuse me, bear with me, bear with me. A direct notice of dispute under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, Section 623 here. Um. Here we go. 623. Right here. A8. 623 is response, responsibility of furniture of information to a consumer reporting agencies. Okay. Um, and then I go to A. I scroll down then 8. And this is a, a direct notice of dispute. All right. I'm sending the debt collector. It says clearly right here the ability of a consumer to dispute information directly with the furniture because they already deleted it, right? You got the you got the investigation results from the bureau said it got deleted. So now I'm going to send the debt collector or any any creditor you send a, a dispute to just make sure it's in compliance right here with this section right here, and they can't give you what they call a what is, what we call in credit repair a stall letter. So. You just got to do these three things. Identify the, sp um, the specific information that is being disputed. Well, there you go. So you're disputing the debt, right? Under the what? The Fair Debt Collection Practice Act now, right? <clears throat> this is what you're saying to the debt collector. Explain the basis of the dispute. Well, you you know, you got an investigation result saying that the disputed information could not be, you know, was not verified. It was not accurate. It wasn't complete. So it was deleted from your credit report, right? Right here. Include all supporting documentation required by the furniture to substantiate the basis of the dispute well you give them a copy of the investigation um results right then you also what you want to do is ha ask them to remove your your information from their system or whatever and here here it is under the fair debt collection practice act right section what i say 805b right i do not authorize you i do not consent with the sharing of my personal information or anything related to this debt to with any other third party people are so hard about that see i just connected the fair credit reporting act and the fair debt collection practice act use them both right to um submit that dispute that direct notice dispute to 
that debt collector who just recently deleted an item. I mean, well, the credit bureaus deleted, the consumer reporting agencies deleted. You got the investigation results. There you go. Okay. Now, again, I did the video on what happens. You dispute a collection or you dispute information and it gets deleted on one bureau, but not the others. So people check out that video or whatever, because I don't want to take away from that video because, well, that's <laughs> I want people to view it. So help me out. Right. But I'm sharing the information. I was in the credit repair again from 2017 to 2022. So I know it's not like an awful, like a long, long time, but it was long enough for me to to learn, you know, working on your own and dealing with more. I mean, like, you know, I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of people, maybe you know, a thousand people without those five years. Just yourself, you learn you know, mistakes. You see the mistakes that you made or whatever, and you learn from those mistakes because you have people's lives in your basically financial part. Uh, not like, you know, physically had their life in my hand, but, you know, it, they, was, they were counting on me, all right, if I review something or whatever. So it all depends on how I, you know, review that, you know, information or whatever and the knowledge that I have on what law can be used and what situation to help fight the case. But at the end of the day, accurate is accurate complete is complete verifiable is verifiable okay so that's one thing i you know in, in business i like to maintain integrity but this is about for the ones that, that you got the collection deleted and next you know another you know you're trying to prevent another debt collector because you know they're going to sell it or they're going to assign it to another debt collector or whatever they're going to try to sing the letter all over again well you can stop that right now what happens if they do if you send them this right here Right. And I, I advise you to get it notarized. Right. If you can't get it notarized. Um, again, excuse my attire. I was getting off work. But so I'm still trying to think. But so many people ask me, hey, how do you do that? Just know that. Mm, well, yeah, I guess you don't have to get it notarized, but it would just probably be best to get it notarized because you're putting them on notice. Right. That, hey, look, you know, I'm not giving you permission. But if if it happens, if it happens. Because it, it, it will happen sometimes, okay? Right. Throughout my years, I can say it happened. Well, guess what? You send them that, and they still got a, you got a new debt collector trying to collect. Well, now, both of them, both of them in my sites now. I mean, you can, well, I would tell my clients. Now, that first debt collector definitely violated, right? Because clearly, you said you didn't, you, we didn't give them consent. You didn't give them consent, and they did it anyway. And that second debt collector, check this out, is the attempt to collect the debt that could not be verified because you got the investigation results back from the bureaus and you put that debt collector on notice hey it could not be verified it was inaccurate right so how did they sell a debt or assign a debt to a third party another third party on an invalid debt or unverified debt voila magic people okay um like i said it, it was it's no secret it's just little known information um is sometimes we can make things you know, harder than what it, you know, what it appear to be or what it should be or whatever. That's because we start adding too much into it or whatever. So I would say, hey, keep it simple, right? That's my, that would be my advice as, you know, as a former credit consultant, right? I was credit repair specialist, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, it's called credit consultant, right? Would be, just keep it simple. Keep things simple as can be, right? Um, And if y'all can, if you, you guys heard me, hear me out, the stuff that I showed you, it's pretty simple, right? Some people call that advanced. I don't call it, I don't consider that advanced at all. I just consider that, well, if you know the laws and you know, like, wait a minute, how to connect the Fair Credit Reporting Act and the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, how to connect these two or whatever, because nothing in the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act has anything about being valid to report something to, to a consumer reporting agency, right? On your credit report. It's all about the methods of collecting the debt, okay? Methods, right? Procedures, like those MOV letters, that people doing in credit repair, I'm like, well, that's supposed to work for the debt collector, not the credit bureau. <laughs> if you ask a credit bureau for the method of verification, they're going to give you important information, a little document going to come to you and say, this is how we do our investigation. That's what that's what you're going to get. So anyway, did the video. So for those who have been waiting, I apologize. Um, Just been busy. Um, But uh, hey, keep the comments coming, people. Let's interact. Ask your questions. This is not the time to be taking shots and, oh, everything free. Y'all crazy for paying this when, you know, these people probably working too. This is not the time for that. This is the time for iron sharpens iron. So if you got something to add to it or whatever, hey, feel free, man. Please do because we need to help. More people out here need help than, you know, than anything. It's 
some of us are a little shy or a little, you know, on the fence about just our situation. You know, we don't like people in our business, but that doesn't mean that we don't need the help. We're just a little reluctant for asking for help or whatever, because, hey, I've been there before, too. I don't like asking people help, like doing it myself. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. But just know that at some point in time, you know what I mean? You, you, you got to ask for help if you need help. You got to ask for help. That means for clarification, people, that don't mean something you expect somebody to work for you, you know, do wor your work for free. OK, so I don't have no understanding of that when people want people to fix their credit for them for free or whatever, just because you get, they got the knowledge. I don't understand that. I, you know, that's just like me right? just getting off work. OK, I know how to do fences, so I'm going to go repair this fence for free because I know how to do it. And they don't. And the customer don't. But they do that. at, Right. So let's just continue to help one another out. Right. And um, yeah, if you can, if people can pay over a thousand dollars or whatever to go see their favorite artists in concert, and somebody you know got a little fee or whatever to help you out, I don't see, I don't really, I don't see the problem. Okay, I don't see the problem. But again, that's just me. Thank you guys for taking the time to check out this video, though. I gotta jump. In. I'm gonna jump in. Uh, well, I'm gonna walk my dog first. That's what I gotta do because uh, he calling. He's waiting on me. But I want to drop this in this one before I get too busy, which I am gonna be extremely busy in the next couple of days. So, but I appreciate all the support I got so far. And, um, and yeah, it's Iron Shop Iron. All right, catch you guys on next. Don't forget, thumbs up, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and definitely, people, you know, share this information, all right? It's Iron Shop and Iron. Um, knowledge is power, but we need to be powerful by applying it and sharing it. Catch you guys on next one. Peace.